In this video, we're going to be explaining the full power of Super Saiyan, assessing its characteristics, power, traits, and misconceptions. So stay tuned to learn more. Kaioshin Karto! Hey there guys, it's Kai Shinkode here, helping you to expand and enhance your knowledge of Dragon Ball. And on this channel, we do Dragon Ball knowledge videos, Dragon Ball merchandise reviews, and of course, coverage of Dragon Ball Super. So if you're new here, maybe you'd like to subscribe. In the last video in the Transformations playlist, we analyzed the Super Saiyan Grade 2 and 3 transformations. But in this video, we're explaining Full Power Super Saiyan. So Full Power Super Saiyan described the state of full power used by Goku and Gohan solely in their fight versus Perfect Cell in the Cell games. They achieved this level from training in the Room of Spirit and Time for one year. In terms of an official definition, the name Full Power Super Saiyan came from the growing up section of Daisenshu 2. It wasn't mentioned anywhere in the manga. Here it was stated that when Goku went full power, he drew out the power of the Super Saiyan to its limit. The manga and the original Japanese anime aligns with this as they say Goku goes full power. Daisenshu 3 gives us more of an official definition however. It says full power time is a type where they are able to unconsciously exist in the Super Saiyan state and even the wildness of their personality vanishes. Only Goku and Gohan can transform into this. This extract gave the state a defined term and it's probably where fans got the name from. But there is one questionable part of the definition as it states only Goku and Gohan can transform into it. But in the manga and the anime, it was stated that it wasn't a transformation in one instance. In chapter 391, Vegeta rebuked Trunks for thinking that Goku and Gohan would transform again at the Cell games. Vegeta said they got used to the grade 1 form, which they judged best to minimize the strain on their bodies. He was right except that Goku would go full power against Perfect Cell in chapter 398. Now the only piece of evidence for Master Grade 1 being its own transformation comes from when Goku released a Kiai at the end of his power up versus Perfect Cell. However, across Dragon Ball Z we've seen fighters use the Kiai at the end of a power up and not just in transforming. For example, we used to see it a lot with Vegeta and his base. As you can see, Full Power Super Saiyan was not really a form at all, it was just a mastered Super Saiyan Grade 1. Some people refer to it as Super Saiyan Grade 4 because of a quote from the Trunks TV special Anime Comic Guide where it was stated, Super Saiyan Grade 4, a form where without consciously raising their key, they are able to remain in Super Saiyan on a regular basis. That's Grade 4. From the start, Grade 1 has balanced power, energy consumption, etc. This form removes the slightly agitated state which characterizes Grade 1. It's a natural form of Super Saiyan which has gotten rid of their wild personality. But it wasn't a new grade or transformation, it was a comfortable, natural and mastered Grade 1. This is supported by the Daisenshu 7 Special Attack Dictionary where Full Power Super Saiyan isn't mentioned, whereas the other Super Saiyan grades are. Full Power Super Saiyan is a convenient name, but people have mistakenly assumed it means the version of Super Saiyan Goku and Gohan as soon as they stepped out of the Room of Spirit and Time. Basically, that version was the mastered Super Saiyan Grade 1, and Full Power Super Saiyan was when Goku and Gohan went full power versus Cell. I just want to quickly thank Herms98 on Twitter for all the guidebook translations. The link to his Twitter is in the description. Once again, we question how did this state come about? Well, it could be argued that Goku stumbled upon the idea of mastering Grade 1 before Goku realized the flaws of Grade 2 and 3. The reason I say this was because in Chapter 387, Goku noticed how Gohan was progressing so fast as he was always shown to be training in Super Saiyan. This may have made Goku realize the pathway to utilize the max power of Super Saiyan, so after meditating on this and then explaining the drawbacks of Grade 2 and 3, he introduced the instruction to make Grade 1 their natural form. Goku also wanted to remove the restless feeling of Super Saiyan. The restless feeling could be the conscious effort to maintain a state of rage, which is difficult. If a Saiyan isn't naturally angry, it's more difficult to transform into a Super Saiyan. The feeling could also be a lack of composure in battle, which is part of the Saiyan pride and mentality. Goku and Gohan were seen to overcome the restless feeling as they could relax and be natural after their room spirit and time training. Also in chapter 404, Gohan said to Cell he didn't want to fight or kill anyone even whilst he was in Super Saiyan, so he overcame the feeling successfully. In episode 165, Goku told Gohan that they would remain in Super Saiyan always, even when asleep. 
When Goku and Gohan emerged from the room of spirit and time in chapter 390, Vegeta stated he couldn't sense their key, meaning they had gained complete key control, enough to suppress Super Saiyan and make it be like a new base form. Regarding others that have mastered Super Saiyan Grade 1, it seems that Goten and Trunks were able to at the young age of 7 and 8. They were able to transform reasonably naturally due to their half sign genetic predisposition. Also, once again, we reference how Khalifa could master Super Saiyan in a matter of seconds as she remained calm and didn't show great agitation from the restless feeling of transforming into Super Saiyan for the first time. In terms of appearance, Master Super Saiyan Grade 1 looks just the same as regular Grade 1. When Goku and Gohan emerged from the room of spirit and time, they were said to look like Super Saiyans, so there wasn't anything unusual about the appearance. Daisenshu 2 does state, whilst Goku was using his full power against Cell, that his aura was different than an unmastered Super Saiyan Grade 1. In episode 178, we saw Goku's aura being smoother than the other Super Saiyan Greys. Similarly, in chapter 404, when Gohan powered up, he also had this mastered aura. There was less energy radiating from them, and the aura visibly became smoother, rather than angular and spiky with the Grade 2 and 3 forms. In terms of power, mastering Super Saiyan Grade 1 brought about a power increase. Just as the Daijinsu 2 states, Goku could draw out the power of the Super Saiyan to its limit in the Cell games. People have said this mastery doesn't give rise to a higher in power increase than Grade 2 and 3. They say that by removing the drawbacks of those forms, the Grade 2 and 3 power is harnessed. But this is where one can get confused as the manga and anime showed Vegeta and Trunks were shocked by Goku's 50% power in Chapter 391 and when he went full power in the Cell games in Chapter 398. This was even after they had used the Rumor Spirit and Time for a second time. Therefore, even 50% power of Goku's Master Grade 1 form was stronger than the Grade 2 and Grade 3 forms. Vegeta was also shocked at Gohan being stronger than himself in Chapter 404. If Goku and Gohan's ki were not greater, then why would Vegeta and Trunks be shocked? It seems that the mastery of Grade 1 itself didn't bring about an increase in power, but it was their training method where Goku and Gohan trained as Super Saiyan versus one another. But I'll speak about this later. To challenge that it wasn't stronger than Grade 2 and 3, people used Chapter 387 when Cell said Grade 3's power had surpassed him, but really he was just toying with Trunks as he only meant at that point. Cell still had two more power-ups if you remember until his full power. Also Toriyama made it very clear for us when Krillin stated how Goku was stronger than everyone else, confirming Master Grade 1 brings greater power than Super Saiyan Grade 3. Some people have also said, well why didn't Goku use Grade 2 and 3 versus Perfect Cell if he had mastered Grade one. Would this bring about an increase in strength and speed? Well in actual fact it wouldn't as Goku and Gohan would be trading their key for poor key control, high key consumption and rampant stamina issues. To use such inferior forms would have led to their quick defeat. And if we go back to the words of Goku, he said that all in all the regular Super Saiyan is best. The concepts of Grade 2 and 3 compared to Mastering Grade 1 were completely different. Grade 2 and 3 were all about sacrificing key to raise power and speed. This outwardly manifested as the muscles being pumped up. However, against stronger and faster opponents, these forms were futile to use. The stamina and key drain was too high when in tough fights. Master Grade 1 used a different concept of increasing the power of Super Saiyan to the maximum by constantly using the form. Their bodies became very used to the gradual increase in power and so they didn't bulk up, handling the power much more efficiently. This method took a far longer time but in the end it was more beneficial as they ended up with more power but without the disadvantages of the Super Saiyan Grade 2 and 3 forms. It took a far longer time because Goku said they would start with basic training which probably means doing all the things they started off with as martial artists but in Super Saiyan. For example in episode 163 Goku and Gohan played a game of catching each other although they could move very quickly and use key blasts. In chapter 390, Vegeta described Goku and Gohan's Super Saiyan mastery as a natural state. This immediately has connotations of a new base which Goku and Gohan strengthened over the course of their training. Therefore, if it would seem that the main bulk of their powering up was not on training their non-Super Saiyan base, rather they were constantly strengthening their Super Saiyan power. This could be true as they didn't use their base at all, remaining always in Super Saiyan, but a good question is, does training in Super Saiyan not only strengthen the power of Super Saiyan, but also strengthen the base? Well, we can only assume yes, as to say no creates problems with the 50 times base multiplier, as Goku and Gohan weren't directly training their non-Super Saiyan base. Logically, if the 50 times multiplier were true, their bases must have been drastically strengthened also. However, it's difficult to know how much stronger Goku and Gohan's base became by the time of fighting cell as they didn't power down. 
Now to support the 50 times base multiplier, they may have needed to have been as strong as 100% freezer in their base. And to help answer this question, the super exciting guide story volumes provides an answer. One part of the guidebook visualized Goku's increasing traits through training in the room of spirit and time. It had four parameters, power, speed, stamina, and key. It starts off with Master Roshi's training and then for each training regime, there is an increase in the points for each parameter. Now by the time of mastering grade one, all previous levels of the four parameters were surpassed, meaning Goku had gotten to his limit. The box object on the graph represents Goku's base state, and since the box goes outside of the graph, it proves that his base had been greatly boosted in all these attributes. Therefore, we can assume that training solely as Super Saiyans did strengthen their bases to a large extent. However, the mastering of Grade 1 didn't mean that the power of Super Saiyan was capped at a maximum. It might have been capped in terms of powering up the Super Saiyan Grade 1, but if we assume the 50 times base multiplier to be true, then there is always room to make Super Saiyan stronger, well past the Cell Arc. This is because, I believe from Dragon Ball Z and Super, that the base can always be strengthened. If we look especially at Dragon Ball Super, one of the greatest training points from Whis was to strengthen the base, as basically a large increase in the base power level can bring about huge increases when transforming because of the multiple. Supplier. However, Goku said to Gohan in chapter 392 they had pushed their bodies to the limit with the training so he said they train 3 days and rest 6 before the Cell games. This point would seem to counter my argument but I believe this was Goku cleverly trying to set up Gohan to transform into Super Saiyan 2. Now there were two other instances in Dragon Ball Z that gave us an indication of the Super Saiyan multiplier. Firstly in chapter 428 Goku was seen training with 2 ton weights on each limb totaling 10 tons. When the South Kai came to watch, King Kai asked South Kai to increase the weight to 10 tons in each limb, totaling 40 tons. Now Goku was stuck, unable to move, but King Kai allowed Goku to go Super Saiyan, and when he did so, Goku was able to move at super speed and with ease. From this scene, people have thought the Super Saiyan multiplier to be four times base, but rationally, the multiplier must be much greater to have such control all of a sudden. Therefore, the 50 times base multiplier is supported. Secondly, in chapter 451, Goku's power as a Super Saiyan was measured by Babidi in a scale known as Kiri. By this, Goku was stated as 3000, and if we apply the 50 times base multiplier, Goku's base would have been around 60. But this doesn't make sense as Goku was able to hurt Yakon, who was stated as 800 Kiri. This scene only showed that the Super Saiyan multiplier was less than 50 times base. However, it should be noted, we don't know how much power Goku was using and also what the Kiri scale measures exactly and whether it's a linear or exponential scale. So it's best to not take this reference very seriously. From chapter 406 and 7, it can be assumed that Vegeta and Trunks didn't master Super Saiyan Grade 1 as they were struggling against the Cell Juniors. However, it appears they were using Grade 1 because they didn't have the large muscles and fierce aura of Grade 2. However, in episode 184, Future Chunks did appear to use Grade 2 and Vegeta used the final flash in a similar fashion as before. But anyways, using Grade 1 was confirmed earlier in Chapter 402 when Vegeta admitted he wasn't near Goku's level. By this I mean Vegeta and Trunks may have been individually training Grade 1 instead after witnessing Goku's brilliance and admitting Goku was one step ahead back in Chapter 391. It's likely that he and Trunks simply didn't manage to gain as much strength because they trained solo instead of sparring. This was to Vegeta's disadvantage, training alone, as we've seen with Freezer and Togoma in Dragon Ball Super, training with a powerful partner can significantly boost power, stamina, key, and speed. This process can be summed up in a Bible verse that I found. It says in Proverbs 27 verse 17, Iron sharpeneth iron, which means that we as people can have an impact on others, be it positively or negatively. But in this instance in Dragon Ball, we can say Goku was strengthening or sharpening Gohan, and likewise Gohan was doing the same back to Goku. We saw this occur in the manga and anime and also the Super Exciting Guide story volume points out their training consisted of constantly being a Super Saiyan, meditation and sparring with another Super Saiyan. Perhaps if Vegeta and Trunks had trained together, they could have been much stronger in Master Grade 1. I was always glad to see by the time of the resurrection of F-Arc and Dragon Ball Super, Goku and Vegeta had learnt this lesson and trained together in the room of spirit and time and they became much stronger as Super Saiyan Blue. In terms of advantages, there are many in mastering Super Saiyan Grade 1. Firstly, there's the ability to suppress Super Saiyan. We know this because of 
chapter 390 when there was no key emitted from Goku and Gohan. This was also going on when they rested at home with Chi Chi where they were able to suppress Super Saiyan so she wouldn't be killed and the whole area destroyed in an instant. The second advantage is there was high key control. With the unmastered Super Saiyan and Grade 2 and Grade 3, we know that transforming used up a lot of key and that lots of key was used to remain in Super Saiyan. However, mastering Grade 1 allowed for a lot higher key control, lower key consumption and higher stamina. We know this as Goku could last against Perfect Cell. People sometimes still get confused though, they say, why did Goku get more tired against Perfect Cell than against Freezer? They say it made the whole process look futile, but what people don't realize is that Goku had a clear advantage versus Freezer, whereas against Cell, he had a disadvantage. Freezer also got much weaker as the fight went on, whereas Goku was the one to lose power quicker than Cell. In chapter 398, Goku said he'd be defeated in an instant if he let up for a second. The disadvantage became very apparent in chapter 399 when annoyed by Goku's instantaneous movement, Cell increased his speed faster than Goku. One could argue that Frieza vs Goku was a lot longer than Goku vs Cell, but Goku being at a disadvantage tired him out by the end, especially after the full power of Kamehameha in chapter 401. Goku was getting beat up, losing power and stamina, and also in chapter 402, Master Roshi could tell Goku was a disadvantage against Cell just from watching the fight on TV. Now we can believe him as Toriyama often used Roshi to give analysis and expert opinion on a fight, but people still have slam mastered grade 1. But if Goku had have used grade 2 or 3, the fight would have been over in an instant. Remember back to Super Saiyan grade 2, Vegeta vs Cell in second and perfect form. Vegeta lost his advantage once Cell transformed into his perfect form, and grade 2 showed its lack against an opponent of equal or of greater strength. Vegeta was completely drained after the final flash, and the fight was basically over. The third advantage is that Master Grade 1 allowed for higher stamina, so Goku could fight harder, not less hard, for longer. The latter wouldn't make sense against an android who could regenerate as Cell could. This was supported by King Kai in episode 179 when he stated Goku and Cell's power wasn't decreasing throughout their fight. Goku knew that Grade 1 was a balanced form, so he chose to master it along with Gohan. And in addition, as we've already discussed, its power can always be increased by strengthening the base form, which multiplies by 50 to give a large strength increase. This is one of the reasons why Super Saiyan in its master state is still the go-to form against weaker opponents in Dragon Ball Super. Time and time again we've seen opponents become completely dumbfounded by this sudden increase in power. In terms of limitations, Mastered Super Saiyan Grade 1 has next to none as it draws out the power of Super Saiyan to its limit. It overcomes all the disadvantages of the unmastered Grade 1 and the inefficient Grade 2 and 3 forms. The only limitation I can think of is, with the loss of the restless feeling, the Saiyan isn't as ruthless but trades that for the ability to rationalize and strategize the fight. In my opinion, I sometimes prefer to watch Goku fighting Freezer and Namek as he was more entertaining to watch, making absolute mockery of Freezer. I hope you enjoyed watching me explain Full Power Super Saiyan and I hope the distinction between Mastered Super Saiyan Grade 1 and Full Power Super Saiyan was made clear. It's so great to see that Toriyama made it so there were few drawbacks so he provided a legacy even into Dragon Ball Super where it's still a go-to form. Thanks for watching this video and if you got value out of it, please Kaioken that like button and definitely subscribe to expand and enhance your knowledge of Dragon Ball as well as get coverage of Dragon Ball Super and Dragon Ball merchandise reviews. Until next time you watch the following videos of mine and we'll see you soon.